Hey y'all, this is your boy Sheriff Speech. Right now I want to talk to you guys about Riverdale Season 3, Episode 8, Chapter 43, The Outbreak. And man, this is the this was the mid-season finale. It'll come back January 15th, January 16th on the CW, and I look forward to it, man. A lot of stuff happened in this episode, man. I'm so glad it actually did happen. One, we finally get to meet Gladys, Gladys Jones and Jelly B. Jones. Gladys Jones being Jughead's mother, finally, and Jelly Bean being, you know, Jughead's little sister. And I'm so happy that we finally get to meet them because the Jelly Bean King comes to Archie's aid when Penny Peabody comes up and tries to kill the guy. And, even, and she bossed up and said, look, look. And she was like, look, let him go, you little you psycho bitch. And she literally hit her in the fucking eye with her forehead or something like that with a damn slingshot. And Glass I had her a little fun with Penny, Penny, Penny Peabody because they got some history. I mean, and Gladys actually has a very, 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 very legitimate reason to fuck Penny Peabody the fuck up because she carved fucking Jughead like a damn turkey. And I'm pretty sure that's what exactly what Gladys did. And I'm so glad she did because, you know, in the beginning of this episode, man, it was wonderful because, you know, we see a lot of the cheerleaders, I might as well say the entire uh, Vixen cheerleader group, cheerleaders group, I fell down with seizures. I mean, we saw Cheryl just looking in up whore. As her girlfriend Tony was just seizing, same with Veronica. Veronica wasn't even aware of how she even got back to the manor, back to Ireland and Hermione's uh, house because the penthouse because, you know, she had a seizure. She just didn't know what the hell happened. So when she learned that you know she had a seizure and things like that, because you know she woke up with her parents arguing, you know about uh, I guess you could call it the uh, I guess it was called uh, the jangle. I, th- I think you know it was it was a drug administered by uh, the gargoyles, a new gang up in Riverdale. I think it's called like, uh, <clears throat> I think because it causes hallucinogenics. It's a hallucinogenic drug, and I think it's called Jingle Jangle or Number Two or something like that. You know, obviously administered by Hiram Hiram Lodge because he's just all about making money and shit like that. Um, Hermione, you know, they her parents wanted Hermione and Hiram wanted to send Veronica up to, back to New York, you know, so that way she has some, you know, some time away from Riverdale, you know, because Archie dumped her. You know, then this is the quote cool, um, Hiram. He said, hey, look, we just Archie dumped you. You know, you're working two jobs. There's a lot of stress on you, so that's what caused you the seizure. Obviously, you know, Brian is able to call bullshit on that because she just knows how her father is. And so there was a constant back and forth between the two of them throughout the episode. I mean, even when all the parents met up at uh, Riverdale High, you know, with uh, Principal Weather because they were having like these little secret board meetings, you know, about the seizures, you know, about all these kids, you know, pretty much almost dying all over this damn drug and Hiram Lodge's actual plans to actually take Riverdale high and flip the shit, flip that, you know, flip the lamb and parcel it and make a profit off of it. And you knew they were, you knew she wouldn't be able to stand for it. You knew um, Veronica wouldn't be able to stand for it. So with that being said, I really thought that this interesting, this episode was interesting because, you know, we finally see Betty get out of her damn funk. You know, it turns out she was, you know, she didn't really take the drugs. Like she was just playing along, you know, for the ride. She got I liked. I loved how she got under Ethel's skin. You know, by bringing up while she's in like a little group with the like the, with the girls or whatever the sisters. And she says like, you know, I, I was with Jughead last night. You know, and I was. He pretty much told me like I was his new queen, something like something of that nature. And and she did that to bait Ethel. She did it on purpose. Purpose. I mean purpose. And uh, Ethel heard that, so she confronted her about. You know, she said, look. He said she's like, look, that's not true. Stop saying things like that. <laughs> And so Betty just keeps going until she's actually she traps Ethel in like this little dark room over where the like where the gargoyle statue is. Because <laughs> Betty told her, like, listen, it's just a damn statue. He's not real. It's because of the damn drugs you guys keep taking that the madam sister keeps giving us. And even about her, actually, Ethel and Betty actually capture that sister and get information out of her. Like, why is Hiram Marge making all these deposits to I use that metaphorically, you know, to you know, to the sisterhood and things like that. And the sister breaks she says, look, it wasn't, the drugs weren't meant to cause these damn effects. You know, it wasn't meant to happen. You know, things that nature. So they lock her in that dungeon with, with the gargoyle statue. Because even Betty tries to tell Ethel, like, look, it's not real. It's just all in your damn head. It's because of the damn drugs. And so Ethel and Betty work together, to, you know, to pretty much free all the girls, you know. And I like how they did it because they actually said, what if we flip the gargoyle king, you know, in, into a wave, into a a symbol of peace, like letting people go. So Betty dressed up as the Gargoyle King and said, look, you guys are all free. Get the hell out of here. 
even Allison, you know, visited Betty and they talked a little bit. I think that's where Betty actually got the idea. You know, because we saw Allison pull up to the sister compound after Betty and <laughs> Ethel, you know, freed the girls. But, you know, they were wondering, like, well, what, 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 what's going to happen to the girls now? Because, you know, they have no place to go. And Betty said, look, we'll figure that out. You know, and then we see, you know, a bit of a family reunion between FP and Gladys, you know, because, you know, Jellybean still hates FP's Gus, of course. But, you know, I like the moment that Jug, you know, Jughead had with his mom because she really missed her boy. You know, she got her GED. She has this business where she takes care of all these kids. You know, they do their little dirt, but, you know, it's just to better their lives, you know, which, you know, she said, because she even asked Jughead, she's like, look, if I don't take these boys in, like, and then they'll just leave them on the streets. I'm like, like, what's going to happen to him? And Jughead says, like, well, well, what's stopping you? You did the same thing to me. And, you know, that's when she got a little defensive. She said, look, look, look like, look, like, look. Let's get some deep before they eat it all. And she was like, look, we did what we did, but, you know, it's only to make sure that we can survive, you know, and, you know, and so forth. Because, and, you know, I like the, uh, the moment between Cheryl and Tony, too, because Cheryl said, look, what if you can just stay with me permanently, you know? And Tony's like, wait a second, so you mean, you mean like, moving in with you? She's like, yeah. She, and Tony's like, well, only if I can get to be the big spoon. You know, and Cheryl and her and Veronica even tortured, even fucking tortured Penelope Blossom. And Penelope Blossom snitched and just told the whole fucking operation. Hiram is dealing in drugs and while Penelope is dealing in prostitution. So, and even, and just to backtrack a little bit, yeah, the very beginning of the episode when uh, Hermione, when Veronica wakes up from her seizure, um... She's like, Dad, I'm, look, I'm not going to New York City that way. You can continue your, your uh, corrupt, you know, business affairs because, you know, Sheriff Minetti, you know, winds up dead with his head off and his hands. And I'm like, I'm like yeah, it's about fucking time, bitch ass Minetti got, got handled, got dealt with. So it was only a matter of time. But then also, I like how Reggie kept, you know, Veronica in the loop, you know, with uh, how the operation, the administration, and distribution of the new drug is going. I and mean, then also, throughout the episode, we finally learned that uh, Jughead, you know, and her mother, Jughead's mother was killing him, like, one late night. She was like, look, we need to talk. I don't th- I think you should let Ar- Archie go. Because, you know, in a funny way, when she first saw Archie, Andrews, and Jughead, she was like, I thought they were, she thought that they were a gay couple. And, they, and, they, and Jughead was like, no, we're not together together. We're just, like, trying to look for a place to stay for right now. So I thought that was, like, really funny. But uh, back to what I was saying before. The Gladys talking wanted to talk to Jughead about, you know, splitting Archie up, you know, just letting him go up, go on his way. You know, Archie's like, look, Jug, she's right. Like, Iron's gonna keep hunting us down, hunting me down, you know, and I can't keep taking you or anyone else with me. You know, it's so much so that Fred actually popped up and he said, Look, like son, I'm with you, you know, if you need to leave, you need to leave and I got you. So Fred gave, you know, Archie his dog so that, that way they can, you know, you know, be okay, they can protect each other, and so forth. Because Ar- we see Archie dye his hair black, so then no one can recognize him. Not even Iron, I guess. So, that's a very smart thing to do. And Fred mentioned something about, you know, not being able to see his grandfather leave. And not, you know, doing better, I guess, doing better for Archie, you know, in terms of having him having a greater life. But, you know, but Archie, you know, stopped me and said, look, Dad, I, I know, I understand what you did. I appreciate what you did all these years. You did the best you could. And so at the very end of the episode, we see, you know, it looks like, you know, Archie, it looks like Jughead and FP were going to follow Archie, but they were stopped because, you know, and before, you know, because before the, because of the seizures, the governor had Riverdale, the entire area of Riverdale quarantined. And so, I mean, this is going back to school too, because when, uh, Frank went back to school and Cheryl, they were talking about their plan to get, you know, get ton of people, Blossom to talk. The quarantine, the hazmat suits, guys, they came there, too, to get everyone that's been infected, quote-unquote, and Veronica ran for her life. But uh, back to, the, you know, the very end of the episode, we see FP and uh, Jughead driving back to their trailer, to, you know, their, like, their house. But they're stopped by sheriffs, and they tell them, like, listen, you can't go beyond this because, you know, the governor ordered a full quarantine at Riverdale. You know, FP and Jughead are like, well, he's like, we can't do that because, like, we live here. He said, look, he said, look, stand out and go back on your bikes and drive the other way. And uh, that's when the episode ends. And then we see like a bit of a s- scenes for like the next the next episode when it returns. 
January 15th. And I look forward to it, man. This has been your boy, Shaver Speaks. Shaver Shaver Speaks, man. I love you guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any recommendations as to what videos you guys want to do next, please let me know in the comments section below. They're always welcome. They always will be. I love you guys. This has been your boy. God bless.